All right, Muscle Talk, only on series at Silliness Bodybuilding. And we got Big Daddy Bo Lewis back. And, of course, Luke Mon. What's up, fellas? What's happening? No, right. Thank you too much. Right. Uh, Bo, did you watch uh, the Arnold UK? Yep. What'd you think? Oh, well, Luke, I didn't get oh, your opinion oh, on it either. On which part, though? Well, um, let's see. First of all, it was only, there was only, what, seven guys in the whole thing. Uh, it's got to suck being Antoine, that's for sure. But uh, do you think – I mean, I thought Hottie deserved to win, but it was a hell of a lot closer because, uh, as far as I'm concerned, because Samson really brought it and Hottie was a little bit off. What did you think? Yeah, I see. I seen the same thing. Same thing? Like, Samson was – I mean, yeah, Samson was – Tighter, most most definitely tighter. He would drive. Yeah, definitely. Hattie kind of came in just softer than what he brought to Ohio. Right. And you got to look at it like Samson with that shape that he got. I thought Samson would have pulled it off though. I would have. I wouldn't have been upset if they gave it to him. Put it that way. No, I wouldn't have been upset. No, I don't think a lot of people. Well, Hardy would have been upset. <laughs> Hardy's a great guy as long as he's winning. Once he's once he's out of the number one spot, he's a miserable prick. He's fucking. You know, <laughs> he hates everybody. You know, uh, what would you think of it, Luke? Um, yeah, I, I I called Hottie winning it um, when I saw prejudging, and um, only because I I was expecting Samson to come and knock it out the ballpark this time right, around. Right. Yeah, that, that that's what I was expecting. Um, um, I was real happy for Akeem. Yes, yeah, Akeem. Akeem. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I, was, yeah. I, was, I was really, yeah. Happy. really, really. Yeah, happy. that's right. Um, but uh, that yeah, that that was my thought on that. I, I was I was I was really expecting Samson to come in, and he did look better. He looked better, but he didn't he didn't shut the door. That's what I was I, I was waiting wait for him to yeah. shut. Yeah, that on that in that show. Yeah, I just I think you know Hadi is such. What's up, Phil? What's going on, brother? I think uh, we we already started, so you're just jumping in. But I think. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I'm, I started my prep, bro. I got to eat my food before I jump on here. That's all right. You take your time. No problem, man. Um, yeah, uh, Bo's doing the same thing. Yeah, up to the side with it. Yeah. Actually, <laughs> oh, little, oh, shit. I'm the only one not eating. Um, what was I going to say? I, I think Hot- know, Patty, Patty's hiding behind me. I don't know what her problem is. We can't see her. See her? You're, you take up the whole screen. It's ridiculous. <laughs> Come on, man. You got something to say? There you go. There you are. Have, have, have you worn your new sneakers yet, Patty? Actually, I was going to take a picture. I was wearing them at the gym uh, yesterday. They did okay. wonderful. All That's right, good. Oh, I said, I love- take a picture with me. I want to show John. He said, take a picture of your own feet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I lost the bet to uh, Patty, and I, I had to buy a sneakers. That was the, that was the deal. Mm. Yeah. And what, what was funny is, do you remember when we were on muscle, uh, muscle development? And uh, that guy, uh, we had, what's his name on? Danny. And he won, I think, was it the Olympia or the Arnold? I don't know. Uh, but he won, and I and we got him the mask. the Yeah. And that, I forgot, the mask. And I think there was a hat that said. It was a hat. What did the hat say? I don't remember. The, ma- the mask was just a, was just like a, you know, what do they call those masks? Like a, a gimp mask? Yeah. And uh, the hat had something on it. Uh-oh. Yeah, I don't remember. I'm like, on. I can't remember what it was. Yeah, I don't remember. It was like it was like Hi Daddy or something like that. I don't I don't remember. Yeah. But but uh <laughs> yeah. So the the winner became the uh the loser, but that's all right. Anyway. Um all right, since there's really not much, the next show is not till April uh sixth. So and that's the Arnold uh Brazil. Yeah. Um, and I'm actually looking forward to seeing Good Vito supposed to be good. Yeah, Good Vito, right? Is supposed to be doing uh, that show. I'm looking forward to see what he looks like because this is going to be his his pro debut. Uh, so uh, he looks insane. If you guys haven't seen the pictures of him, he looks like a beast. But I figured since uh, there's really not much going on, we could talk supplements and super subs and what you know over the counter supplements that are important to take. At least we do a little educational stuff. Instead of uh, talking about the actual sport of bodybuilding, so since Phil is the uh, since Phil is the um, personal trainer, 
Oh yeah, Bo, Bo is too. I, actually, all of you are right. Fucking guy. Anyway, I think we should do that. We'll uh, see what the what's, what what's what over the counter stuff is necessary. You want to start, Phil, or you want me to go? Uh, it's uh, I stick to the basics, man. Uh, multivitamin, probiotics, uh, glutamine, and um, uh, EAAs. I just keep it very simple. Okay. With me, I do. Uh, this I do multivitamin, multimineral. I do extra vitamin C. I need extra vitamin D because I'm on the ground all day and I get no sun, right? So I, you know, so I, I have to, if I don't take it, I'm vitamin D deficient. Um, I take uh, CoQ10 uh, mm -hmm. because as I'm getting older, I just need help, you know, with repair and, 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 and cell activity and whatnot. And I also take uh, fiber. So I keep myself regular and then and then a, a protein shake and a pre-workout it seems um, like it seems like a lot but i think what i take is necessary oh i actually take chondroitin glucosamine chondroitin because because after after the age of 40 i've been having problems with my elbows and shoulders and shit yeah, turmeric work turmeric works real good with, with uh, joint issues Tur Tur I, you know what it might be in it because i use the species brand and because it's a combination oh, species it might nutrition? Is yeah. Species nutrition? yeah yeah so that might actually be in it. Luke, what about you? What do you think is uh, necessary? Um, I, I use, I'm always, um, I, take, I take the vitamin D. I, I take that as well. Uh, multivitamins, uh, the BCA, BCAAs, uh, my Tutka. Um, yeah, that that's pretty much what I've, my day-to-day my -day basis. My um my vitamin B, B12, I take that. Those mm -hmm. are like just the 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 multivitamins that I I take on on an everyday basis. See, I'm on the fence with the uh, BCAAs because I feel like if you get enough protein in, um, you don't need it. But then again, yeah. if you're on, if <laughs> good, Phil, good, you, you still you still need it. I mean, I think a, uh, BCAAs is better because essential amino acids. I think that works better. The BCAAs I do um, in the morning before I do fasted cardio, just to preserve mm -hmm. uh, from muscle loss. And then I do it in my uh, pre-workout before I work out. But a, uh, the AAA, EAAs, if I do that four times out, four to five times out of the day with with, uh, with like an extra protein shake, just to get more protein throughout the day. Even when I diet, I still throw that in about four to five times a day. Yeah, I could totally understand yeah. uh, when you're when you're dieting. Explain the difference between BCAAs and EAAs. One's branch chain amino acids and one is central amino acids. So the central amino acids have anything, everything that your body necessarily needs. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, you got to remember, uh, BCAAs was out first for a long time, you know, branch chain amino acids. But I think you get more of a benefit. Uh, some, some, There's some protein shakes you could buy that comes with the BCAAs in there. Mm -hmm. And uh, you add the uh, EAAs in there. But I think I do a combination of both. I just ne never really put them together at the same time. But I think the... Uh, EAAs is, is more sufficient for your body because it's essential. I got you. Oh, we lost Bo. It was Bo was uh, coming up? Yeah. Take your time, brother. There you go. All right, what do you take, Bo? What do you think? Yeah, I like EAAs myself. Okay, I'm like yeah, like I kind of take some of the, some of the same stuff as Spear take. But like on my off season, I also throw in creatine. But I take my creatine after my workout. Why it's after your workout? I feel it works best for me after my workout. It yeah helps pull that water in the north and also I feel like it helps me get uh, uh what's what heal fast though. Right, yeah. right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah. So that's why I use it like after my workout. I used to use it before, but now. Nah, and my vitamin, I take basically the same thing. EAA, I can drink EAAs all day. Not gotcha. just one or two times. Like, I can mix that with maybe like four meals, four or five meals a day. I When I uh, when I was competing, obviously, I was never on your guys' level. Every time I say when I was competing, I got to throw that in there. But um, my after-workout shake was uh, two scoops of isolate, a scoop of creatine, a scoop of glutamine, and then I would put cobalin, a scoop of cobalin in. Do you guys use that? Any fast acting uh, carbohydrates? Yeah, I was at first. I was using that with my pre workout, though. 
Well, your pre workout. I mean, not my uh, pre workout, but my pre workout meal. I was throwing. Ah, I got you. And I, then, like after a, a league of back days, I throw it in after a league of back days. Also. Mm. What about you, Phil? What What do you? Okay, sorry, Phil. Uh, sorry, Bo. Phil, what do you think? Why you think that's necessary to cobbling? I do it uh, as an intro. It's in, in my. Um, I do a, a HD um, uh, carb. It's a carb powder. It's flavored. Mm -hmm. HD carb. Um, I use it pre workout in my intro drink. Okay. All right. So let's say you got a young guy. He comes to you. You know. He, you know. Maybe he's in his early twenties. And he wants to start working out. He's on a budget. What's absolutely necessary uh, that you would tell him to pick up over-the-counter stuff? Keep it very simple. Multivitamin, EAAs, and um, probiotics and, a pro and protein. Probiotics is really key. Everybody has to be taking probiotics. But those four things is, just, is a, a significant enough for just a regular average person working out, man or woman, uh, to keep them, you know, keep their supplement where it needs to be. All right, explain why probiotics is uh, is necessary. Because probiotics is good for gut health. Okay. Um, every bodybuilder uh, that, that, that is competing pro, amateur, or whatever level they're at, gut health is key. Um, Natalia speaks about it a lot. Like, she does, she goes to these places, they put things over her stomach. Like, she goes to all, all kind of crazy technology things. But gut health is very key in probiotics. And um, glutamine both work together but you really should be taking a probiotic some people do a pre-probiotic and then they do a regular probiotic i just do one probiotic and it lasts all day all right so what kind of probiotic do you use or you recommend oh i ain't giving you my secrets but i just <laughs> tell you <what. laughs> listen long as, it's, long as it's about 30 to 40 um uh, uh being strands you're good as long as it's around there that's that's quality all yeah, right. it got to be at least 30 or 40 billion. You know what yeah. I'm saying? That's that when you know you're getting a good uh, probiotic. Is that, do they, do they have to be refrigerated? Yeah. Some do. Some, Some do, yeah. All mm -hmm. right. And you use that too, Luke? Yeah. Now, what would you say to a kid that, uh, you know, like a young kid and he's uh, just starting out? Yeah, I tell him, you know, um, get the basics, your multivitamins, just like Phil said. Um, make sure you get your vitamin D, you know, cause I, I didn't know that that, that actually binds the, the muscle to the bone, helps bind muscle to the bone, your vitamin D. So that, that'll help stop tears and, um, things like that while training. So, you know, I'll definitely let them know that, um, then, um, food. Yeah. Food. yeah they, you know, they, they, they really want to, they always think they need to run to the, um, that's to right, the other yeah. stuff quick, but it's the food is what you yeah. that's that's is comes down to that simple thing is the yeah. food you're eating, and that's you know that's what I would tell them. Yeah, let's actually let's let's uh let's jump on that. Bo, same thing, same scenario. Young kid comes to you, he's on a budget, maybe he's a college kid, maybe he's just starting out working or whatever, and he's he wants to eat like a bodybuilder. What things do you tell him that are inexpensive that are effective? Well, the thing, like you're saying, like the supplements, okay, cool, but like food, if you got the foods, you got you got the blueprint. Yeah. If the, the the vitamins is like a helper, but the food is key to all this. Like, if you can't afford certain things, you got to understand bodybuilding, you can shop on a budget. Don't be surprised to go, or don't be afraid to go to the dollar store or Walmart one of them kind of stores and get what you need. A lot of people think, oh, I got to go to this this store, this store, you know, Whole Foods, something like that. Trader Joe's, stuff. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. you don't have to go there. You go go somewhere, go to Dollar General, check them out. I'm talking about they got some of the same things that you need. Shop on the bus. Main thing, rice, meat, veggies, you're good. Yeah. Yeah, what I, what I used to do when I was a kid is I used to take uh, – and I actually learned this from from Dave Palumbo. I went to one of his seminars because he used to do seminars in the late '90s, early 2000s. And I would do uh, tuna, uh, yeah. brown brown rice. Mm. I used to put soy sauce and basically some uh, some broccoli, and that would be a meal. And it was pretty inexpensive, you know. It wasn't it wasn't expensive at all. And of course, I would make the brown rice enough so I had you know plenty for the for the week or whatever. But you know, you're talking about ruining my mother's kitchen. Talking about an Italian lady, 
and I have to make brown rice. And she didn't understand why I couldn't just use pasta. <laughs> what, what about you, Phil? What do you, what do you say to a kid that's like, I'm on a budget. I want to, um, I want to uh, get some food. Uh, what, what do you recommend? I, I listen. A lot of the kids I talk to, my money is very tight. You know, mm -hmm. because you know, I got to break down to them ounces and you know how much uh, protein, depending on their body weight and how much muscle they're carrying, how much protein content they should get in. Because not everybody can take in one point one gram. Some people, right. you know, if they're carrying less muscle, then they could they could intake a little bit less protein. So I tell them a lot. I mean, listen, it's very simple. Oatmeal's cheap. Yes. Protein shake. You could get protein shake very cheap. You can get egg whites and eggs. That's not That's too right. expensive. You know what yeah. I mean? And if you can afford to get some chicken, you get some chicken, you know? I had a guy yeah. come to me and said, you know, I get all my chicken from the Chinese restaurant because it's cheap to get, get it from the Chinese restaurant. <laughs> yeah. yeah, listen, <laughs> it's fine because Chinese yeah. restaurant chicken is just it's white meat. You know what I mean? If that's what it really is, I don't know. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, you just keep it yeah. simple with simple things that's that's cost effective. I did that uh, as a young man up and coming. And I ate a lot of oodles and noodles back then, too. And that was my carb source. But when I was young, I had a very fast metabolism. So I could live right. on oodles and noodles and eggs all day long. Yeah, it's amazing how, how different it is when you're a young guy. But yeah, oatmeal's inexpensive. Um, tuna, you know, yeah. we're not talking we're not talking the fancy tuna slice. We're talking in a can, you know. Tuna in a can. Tuna in a can, bumblebee tuna, inexpensive. Uh white rice, even brown rice is is relatively inexpensive. Eggs. Um what kind of and I'm thinking, I'm trying to think, you know, after that it starts becoming it starts getting pricey. Once you start getting into like salmon cod uh actual slices of tuna even even like cashews and nuts are, are are expensive you know um red meats you good you good red meats then you start really getting well, how about this what about about ground chicken or ground turkey <clears throat> is that uh but that's a little bit yeah it's it's less expensive than than the red meat it, than the, it, it, it's less expensive like you can go you can go sales and, and get either one of those, and you can get the two pack, and come out better. Yeah. Like, right. Like you can get your ground chicken or your ground turkey, like ninety nine percent, ninety nine one or something like that, and get you some oatmeal. You'll come out a whole lot better. Or some potatoes. They yes. Also got potatoes enough for the list. That's right. White potatoes are pretty inexpensive. Yeah. yeah. Because I got I get a lot of kids at the gym that you know I talk to because I think I. I probably told you guys, I go to the gym right after work usually. So I get out of work at three. I'm not at, I'm at the gym between three 30 and four. So there's a lot of high school kids, college kids, you know, and you know, you get friendly and they start picking your brain and whatnot. And right away they want to know what supplements. And then I tell them, you know, you, you got to get your food straight first. And I give, I tell them the very basic supplements. I never, you know, I got to change. I got to do more research on the, Oh, there's Dorian. Look at that. He made it. Uh, I got to do more research on the BCAAs and EAAs because I always told people if you're getting enough protein, you, you really don't don't need your BCAAs. Yeah, but it, you you do need it, though. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You got to realize, like, you, you can take your pre-workout meal, okay? You, say you get got the BCAAs and your pre-workout meal. But at the same time, you in the gym, say an hour, 15, hour, 20 minutes, you're going to tear your muscle down. Think about what you're doing to your muscles then. Cause that food can wear off real fast. And look, fast metabolism, body real. That food can wear off fast. So you can be enough sitting the BCAAs and your body out at the same time. So you like you and doing intro, like doing the uh, while you're working out, sipping on BCAAs. Yeah. All right. Yeah, that's actually I used to do that too. Uh, Dorian, we're talking about if you're a kid and you're on a budget. Mm -hmm. uh, Dorian, you know. Bo, actually. Yes. Bo, Bo. Hey, okay, Bo. Cool. What's up, bro? What, what's going on, bro? Hey, man, nice to see you. <laughs> We're talking about if you... Uh, kids on a budget and nutrition. Yeah, exactly. What do you tell them to to buy as far as either supplements or food? What do you say to, what do you say to go buy? I think supplements are overrated. If the food ain't there, you ain't going to make it happen. I just right. tell people a lot of fucking food. And, uh, you know, from there, we start looking into supplementation if they can afford it. But you got to do the most important thing first. Get those calories in from quality nutrients. Okay, so a 20-year-old kid comes to you and says, you know, he wants to be a bodybuilder. He wants you to help him. He's on a budget, though. What do you tell him to buy as far as food goes? That's that's where we're at. Eggs, canned tuna, 
Uh, I'm sure you can get ground beef for cheap. Normally, I'd recommend a grass-fed ground beef, but that starts getting pricey. Yeah. You know, and there's a big difference between those two. So uh, some cheap ground beef, eggs, tuna. Uh, when I was in college, I used to, from Land of Lakes, get like the unflavored bags of whey protein, which is a byproduct of their butter production. Really? And they, Yeah, it was like 59 bucks for like 30 pounds of it or something like that. It was ridiculous. Really? So that's what oh. I did when I was on budget. That... I would eat angel hair noodles and uh, rice and broccoli. Uh, yeah, it, we're basically all on the same page, except you know, f- to us this is, to us this is old. This is like you know we've known this for years. But to the new kids coming up, they don't know you know shit. You know, I mean, I talked to this guy. <laughs> I swear to God. And what's funny is, it's also difficult when you have uh, a, an immigrant working out right because i've talked to guys that are from like other countries and they're still eating from what their what their customs are back in their old country right and i'll be like you know so what do you eat for breakfast and they'll be like oh i have some toast and i have tea you know and i'm like well you know you gotta you can't eat toast and tea bro yeah (laughs) you know you're not you're not in panama anymore right you gotta yeah yeah you know so yeah, I've I've gotten that a lot. I've gotten the kids that don't know how to eat. And oh, what about this? This is the best. What about when you, when you get a kid or anybody really? I've I've had this for anybody, and they're trying to gain weight, and they go, "Wow, uh, you gotta." And I'm like, "Well, you gotta eat." And they're like, "I do eat." And I'm like, "All right, what do you what do you eat?" And I like, and they're like, "Well, I'm like, all right, just tell me what you eat for breakfast." Well, like I, you know, I have two eggs and I have toast, mm-hmm. and I'm like, that's not eating. That's not. You're not gonna gain. Wait, I'm like, you have to eat, eat, eat. And then I usually send him the clip of when I interviewed Dave Palumbo, when he talked about his, those shakes that he used to drink. You ever see, you ever, you ever hear about those shakes that he used to drink? They used to make himself. It's enough to make you want to throw up. He used to put a dozen eggs, whole eggs, right? He was like par- paranoid of salmonella, salmonella poisoning. So he used to put them in the microwave first. So right off the bat, the shake is warm, right? So he used to put a dozen whole eggs into the uh, a blender. He used to put oatmeal in the blender. He used to put, um, uh, what else did he put in the blender? Uh, metrics, because back in the day, you know, that was the protein metrics. Apple juice, um, oat, uh, oatmeal, and then he used to blend it all up. And um, it, it was the old school glass blender. Remember the old school ones? And he used to fill it up all the way to the top, right? And he used to just, Drink it over the sink. And then you would have to stand there for like five minutes and uh, it has to digest because if he didn't, they move too fast. He would throw it all up. Right? right. And then he would, and he said a couple of times he did throw it up and then he would just do it all over again and just make the whole thing all over again. And I'm like, God damn, that is the most disgusting <laughs> shake I've ever heard in my life. That is just, and he was just like, well, you know, if, you know, his attitude is I, I looked at, eating like it was my job. I wanted to be a bodybuilder and that's how I made a living. And that was my job. And he, he would go on like about, he would go to McDonald's twice a day, but he had like this crazy fast metabolism. But yeah. also back then you didn't really get penalized for having a bloated stomach back in the late nineties, early two thousands. Like nobody kind of gave a shit. Right. It kind of the powers that be came down on it. And I would say after like 2010, 2012 is when it really, when they really started like, okay, guys, you, 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 your gut's getting out of control, right? And you got to cut cut down on it. And uh, that's when, you know, guys started really concentrating on their gut and gut health and the vacuums and so on and so forth. But how much of that, if you're eating that much, I could only assume that your stomach is going to get big and bloated. What do you think? But just like what Phil said, though, you got to throw that probiotic in there. Yeah, okay, right. You got to get that in there to help. Then you got to have some, some digestive aid to break that food down, man. Because if you're in your, your stomach ain't digesting and you're just sitting on there, you'll see what kind of misses in your health. That's actually a good point. Probably nobody did that back then. But Dorian, what do you think? They were talking about uh, probiotics for gut health. You know, even though I'm doing the low carb thing right now, mm-hmm. every day I drink a kombucha. 
it's like a fermented tea type of thing and it has all types of natural probiotics in it. That's something I do to maintain my gut health. Really? And picking off of what Bo just said, you know, for about 20, I've been bodybuilding 26 years. Wow. And uh, it's just been within the last two off seasons where my goal was not to eat as much food as possible, get as big as I possibly can every off season. Mm. Now, since I stopped doing that, now my waist is finally coming in because I think one of the big, biggest critics critiques of my physique from the judges is my proportions because my waist is too big. Mm -hmm. And shit, it's going to get like that if you're carrying around 20 pounds of food in your gut all the fucking time for six months at a time. Yeah, right. It's it's amazing how these guys keep so much size and their waist so small like a hottie. I mean, no, I know hottie's a special bodybuilder. Don't get me wrong, but it's even the Samson. You know, you know, his waist is relatively small compared to uh, the rest of them. And the amount of food these guys have to eat, it's 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 unbelievable. Well, look, feel, though. feel a big dude. Look at his stomach. Feel yeah, you're right. Stomach. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <clears throat> does it matter when you're on your off season and you're taking in that food as far as your uh, gut goes? Does it matter what type of protein? Because a lot of guys switch from red meat and then they start eating a lot of fish. Like Jay Cutler was really big into, uh, you know, eating uh, cod and filet and fish. Before the Olympia, yeah, uh, blue blue does the same thing. I think a lot of the coaches are starting to do that as well. I think about the last. That's if I mean I know I had a conversation with Nick Walker. He cannot stand fish, yeah. so the condition he gets in with just eating chicken is is remarkable. But fish do take you to a whole nother level. Um, and I do it the last pretty much probably the last six weeks, six seven weeks. And it just gives you a whole different type of look. And, you know, Blue was trained by Hadi. That's who coached him his career. And uh, he does a, a lot of uh, Hadi's philosophies when it comes down to the protein. I mean, obviously, Hadi's the king of what he does with transformation. But, yeah, fish towards the last, you know, last uh, you know, seven, six, seven weeks straight through the show. And, of course, peak week, we throw in, you know, fattier meats, red meats and stuff like that as we're carving out. But fish works a miracle. Some people don't can't stand it. That's different. But, um it is horrible. I mean, I I hate personally all seven meals, <laughs> freaking fish, you know, all day oh. day. But uh, cod is the only thing I can really tolerate pretty well. And um, flounder, um, cod is flakier, and then the flounder is a little bit more softer on my gums. So those I could I can handle, and I could push through it for the last six weeks. Luke, do you do the same kind of thing? Yeah, I do the fish the last the last couple of weeks before the show. Same kind of fish though, cod and flounder. Yeah, cod. There's a lot of cod. Now, when you're taking in like cod and flounder and whatnot, it's very low in in fat, right? It's uh, do you do you what kind of where are you getting your fat sources from that? Or are you pulling your fats out because of you because it's a pre contest? Or everybody's a little bit different. For for the last honestly, for the last seven to six six to seven weeks, man, you, you don't we don't get much of any fats. I mean, it's, you just get a little fats from... Now, don't get me wrong. There will be some days where I go through some moments where, man, you know, because the carbs are so low, you know, we're at 120 grams of carbs, and, you know, it, it is punishing, especially nighttime for me is the toughest. You know, I have to take sleeping pills and knock myself out because the later I stay up, the more I start craving things I have no business knowing. Oh, but yeah. once in a while, I'll grab probably a half a tablespoon of organic peanut butter um and you know just taste that because it settled my stomach well and i go back to sleep but no we go straight 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 barely no fats because when we carb load we come in with a lot of fats uh that's the trick of the game uh, with the carbs we cut back on the water start tapering back on the water and we come in with the carbs we we, we measure out the salt we still keep salt in but we come in with the flame mignon and the salmon you know what i mean and, and the fattier foods the potatoes and stuff like that and that's the week week out or week or that's, two weeks out. That's peak week. That's the peak week. Oh, you must love peak week after that torture oh, for the Yeah. <laughs> I'm in heaven, man. Yeah, I can't. Yeah, I can only imagine what you go through. Uh Bo, what about you? Is that you do something similar or you don't have to pull out fats like that? Yeah, I do something just like that. Like I I cut my well, my fats get taken out about the same time. And like it, it's been a couple of times where I haven't been on fish. I've just been straight on chicken. Really? Yeah, for like my Chicago or uh, 2022, I was on straight chicken because I was like losing like three pounds a day. Wow. And my metabolism was, wouldn't slow down at all. So I'm like, I had to figure out what I was doing and how to slow it down. 
So far about that last week, I got a look, look, well, about the last two weeks, rather, I got a look fluid in it. But most likely, it's like, I'm like, feel, I get chicken, but then that fish kick in, <laughs> that's when you really see your body change, man. That fish ain't nothing nice. Yeah. <laughs> that fish don't make you, like, well, I know we all go through this, but we're everybody body big. When you get down to that diet like that and you, you only getting fish, you be craving some crunching. Yeah. <laughs> so the only crunch you can get, like I, I be on my spinach. I eat spinach straight out the bag. That's my crunch. Really? Yeah, I eat it straight out the bag. I, I tell myself it's some tater chips. Cause my body be playing tricks on me and you get so lean, it's just straight fish, man. That fish. People have no idea the torture that bodybuilders go through. Although Dorian, you don't you don't really have to kill yourself with the diet. You were saying that you could you could take in carbs straight through, right? Well, I haven't been eating much lately, and I've been getting lean quick. I mean, it's directly proportional. If I'm taking a lot of carbs, it's probably gonna slow down my progress on the fat loss. Right. You know, I had 50 grams of carbs yesterday. Um, my calories were really low yesterday, I busted ass. Wow. But if I can do that, make it through the night without binging on anything, I wake up the next day and I can see the difference. So it's like worth whatever that little suffering is. Now, how long do you do that for? Because you got Tell some I'm time. Ready. You got time before the New York Pro. Yeah. I told everybody I was going to be ready in five weeks. So I got four more weeks. I'll be ready in four more, four weeks. Wow. Is that the, the New York Pro's that close? Holy shit. No, it's eight weeks out from Saturday. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay know that it's, if my calories are high at one point and I do what I call pulling the rug out from underneath it, all of a sudden, you know, my calories are high, my metabolism's high. And if I just go low and stay low until I'm lean, that's the best way for me to do it. Uh, if I got to do it in 15 weeks, I get fucking bored with it. If I can do it in five weeks, I'm going to do it in five weeks. And then I can just kind of like feed it in from there. That's actually a pretty good, uh, that's actually a pretty good way to do it because doing it for, for 15 weeks or 12, oh my God, it's fucking got to be torture. Luke, you got to pull carbs out completely too when you uh, when you compete or? Um... No, I, I actually carb cycle. But I, I have to be real careful with me. I put me on watch because my metabolism is still fast and like I'll, I'll shrivel down like nobody's business if I don't have the right amount of carbs. So what do you, what when you carb what, what, cycle? Yeah, that my protein. What we we'll do? We increase my protein. We have to increase my protein. I go heavy on the protein, on the meats and everything, just to you know, for me to 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 keep the look and and come in dialed in. Before right. the and what about your uh, your fats? Do you take in fats? or you pull that out too, like Phil? After that, the fats get pulled out. I don't. I don't. There are no fats in that one. You know what's funny is for for a while the trend was. You know, pulling carbs out, but leaving fats in. Uh, where is he? Uh, da, da, da. Get rid of this one. Look, uh, uh, remove. There we go. Yes, remove. Uh, uh, done. Okay, here we go. Uh, yeah. So anyway, for a while, like uh, people were doing the uh, the you know high fats diet instead of uh, instead of uh, carbohydrates. But the majority of you guys say you pull the fats out. And you do like moderate carbs, uh, like Luke does uh, carb cycling and so on and so forth. What? How did you figure out what works for you? I mean, was was it basically somebody that had uh, helped you, or you just figured it out yourself? You just fucking. Well, yeah, my my trainer was watching me with an, with another trainer. Okay. I didn't know he, he was like really he was, he was paying attention to me. I guess, he saw potential or whatever. So he was paying attention. So when it when I did come to him, it was like it, he already knew what to do. Right there. He 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 knew exactly what to do. And it was like, okay, you know, and and that's that's how we wrote. Because I did try the the fats, no carbs and only fats. Yeah. And that that didn't work too well. That didn't work too well for me. Okay. All right. Phil, what about you? How did you figure out what worked for you? Just trial and error? Me personally, I, mean, I can figure out anything. I mean, um, what I thought in the past worked for me because you know I did work with Dave Palumbo, mm -hmm. um, and Dave used a logic like Chris Aceto, um, 
they pretty much do pretty much the, the similar things. They're big on um carb cycling. Mm -hmm. Carb cycling is very good uh, if you do it the correct way. It worked for me, but what carb cycling did was bring me in smaller. If you look at, look at me from 2019, uh, 2020, when I took fourth, I think Dorian was right behind me in that show. Um, those are all carb cycling. It, it brings me, it, it carb cycling makes me smaller. It'll bring you in really good condition, but it, it, it makes you small. Like, like he was saying, you can drop weight really quick doing carb cycling. I mean, there's different ways you can do it. Three day carbs, two yeah. days protein and fats, or um, four day carbs, one day protein and fat come back with the carbs. There's so many different ways you could switch it up. Mm -hmm. At one point, I, I was like, man, that's the bread and butter. Uh, when I was with Phil Vids, we did the same thing. The only thing Phil did differently was the no carbs. It was uh, no carbs and just uh, fats. I got like 50 grams in the morning, and it was fats uh, all day long on my days off, right? Um, and that was manageable because I'm not training. So I have, you know, when you when you do it with you know, no carbs when training, your workout sucks. Right. So he we did it on off days. And, yeah, I mean, that brought me in taking second to Ian, but I lost because – I didn't have enough size. You know, that's what basically was told me. Yeah, you came in peel, but I basically got out muscled also in Tampa against uh, Steve Kukoc and uh, Ian again. Now, when I when I hooked up with Blue, his philosophy is just really different. I and mean, in, in every person he trains is different. So you got to get to know the individual body. Mm -hmm. uh, he doesn't do any carb cycling, but he does take a little bit of my advice. So basically what I would do is cut my carbs half on my days off from the gym. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But his philosophy is building muscle, staying full. You know, so you have to have those carbs in there for a certain duration until, you know, we notice that, okay, we need to get a little bit tighter. And then we just start chiseling back on the carbs. So right now, my carbs is pretty, pretty good. I mean, I'm probably around a good, almost close to 300, 325. Um, and the protein is high between 10 to uh, 12 ounces. You know I mean? I get uh, three chicken and then about three fishes. But um, as we taper down now each week, because I do check-ins every single Saturday, we just monitor everything, and he knows how to pull back percentages. Mm. I can't explain to you how he does it, but yeah. I always thought carb slacking was the key, and it does work for a lot of people. I think Akeem did that because I think he hooked up with uh, Chris Cito for the UK. He did, yes, um, he did. Yeah, and it, it gives you that look, especially bigger guys. He ain't going to lose no size or muscle. Right, He's yeah, already really. So it benefits people like Akeem and somebody super big. But I just like the design where you have a staple of the carbs. And I'm a cream of rice type guy and uh, white yeah. rice. I only digest certain things. I can't do oatmeal. So the big thing is I had to find out what my body was able to digest, what works for my body, especially as I'm getting older. And then blue just tapers in off of that. And he just, he just create magic each week as we go in. But we always start six weeks out. His philosophy is, you know, on the off season, we try to stay as lean as possible, pack on that muscle. As you get older now, a lot of people need to understand. I mean, Kamal knows this very well, but because he don't allow himself to get too big. If you diet uh, for a short period of time and don't give the lacticity of your skin time to catch up with the diet, that's why you have to start further out and gradually work your way in and start tapering down so the body the lacticity of the skin keeps up with especially you when you're energy. especially when you're older yes so that's the trick that i've learned from blue so i always want to start six weeks out and cruise i don't want to punish myself i'd rather be punished the last six weeks but right. just cruise as we go through yeah okay bo you do something similar or yeah i understand what he's saying about that like I'm I'm an older guy too, so I have to do some of the same things that he he just said though, because you if you if you let your body, you know a lot of I ain't gonna say a lot of it, but some people like to see how big I get. If you're an older guy, you don't want to see how big you get and packing on fat. Right. That's what's gonna make it a look way harder for you. Then your prep got to be longer, unless you like one of them guys who will come down two three weeks. You know what I'm saying? Real fast, but if you wait, man, that's that's a waste of time to just die, 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 die for for that long anyway. I yeah, do something I, like that. I come down real fast, but also like them last six weeks, it'd be like a steady pace. And it just comes off, just comes right off. Yeah. Wow. Okay. And Dory, you uh you do something similar? 
the last six weeks? Uh, I'm trying something a little different you know, with the timing this time around. Okay. And it's really based off of kind of what I learned from Dennis James. And because uh, he said he'd bring his calories down right off the bat and he'd do like two hours of cardio right off the bat. I'm not doing two hours of cardio. I might be doing like 45 minutes to an hour now. But at the same time, Dennis likes to eat and I'm, I'm not eating as much. So it's, right. at the, end of the day, it's the same caloric deficit. Mm. But I want to get down quick and I want to get down early. Then, uh, you know, I got to get flat and I got to get depleted sooner or later. I just want to get it all off. That way I can like, know exactly how much i can do to fill out for the show gotcha mm -hmm. and how much time do you give yourself well i think in the past i try to like time it out right up to the gate it's like i want to work all the way into depletion then when i'm like two weeks out i'm ready but now i want to do it where i'm like five weeks out and i look ready yeah. and uh you know, kind of fill back up at that point then i'll probably two weeks out i'll go into one last heavy depletion and i'll deplete it all out yeah. And when I'm about a week out, that's when I start calorieing up because I don't like to calorie up right before the show because the amount of food it takes for me to fill out is astronomical. So I need to get that food in me, processed and out of my guts and in my muscle. And usually the last two days, I try not to eat as much so I can get my gut to deload so I can create that aesthetic appeal to my physique. All right. So I'm going to change the topic a little bit. I saw Justin Rodriguez in the gym. And I went over to sp speak to him. I don't know if he knows me or anything, but I told him I was the, the YouTube guy. And he's like, yeah, 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 I remember. Probably doesn't, but it doesn't matter. Uh, he said he's doing He said he's doing Detroit. Yeah. That's going to be his next show. Um, he's, he's, a, he's a really nice guy. Super, super nice guy. Uh, obviously, we're in the gym together. He doesn't look like, you know, he, he kind of looks like he's going through the motions. Is it just too far out from the show to, to kick it in high gear? Because he didn't look like he was really pushing Probably three out from Detroit. I don't know yeah. when Detroit is. It's in three or four weeks. It's not too far from now. Let me see. I think. Uh, yeah, because I think it's it's before New York, though. Yeah, it's pretty soon. A month okay. or five weeks before New York. I have the list of the. Uh, let me see. Where are we? Uh. Okay, here we go. The next one, the next show is the Arnold Classic. Yeah, April 13th is the Detroit Pro. Yeah. And the following week is the uh, Was he covered up, John? Yeah, he was completely covered up. Yeah. Well, I mean, he posts he posts a picture. He looks decent. I mean, he's he's working with um a different coach now. So the problem this guy keeps switching coaches up to right after every show. But um he's working with uh, Matt Jensen's guy. He's on uh, Jensen camp, but he's not working with Jensen. He's working with Je uh, the guy that's helping um, Tony out. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Tony, Tony, Tony looks insane. Yeah. So I, I do that. Everybody's starting to jump because I, you know, um, he can't really take on any more people because he has Nick and everybody else, but he does have that. I, I can't remember his name. It starts with a J. Yeah. Jacoby. I know. What's his name? Jacoby. What's his name? Jacoby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Jacoby's taking on like all the newer people. He has Boogeyman and all them guys. So yeah, that's who uh, he's working with now. Is Jacoby? And it's yeah, just you know, yeah, okay. know, Justin, Justin, uh, say we will change like the last week of the show. Justin yeah. got one of them bodies to where it's a hit or miss, and if he hit, then you will see a difference. Yeah, but yeah, if he yeah. miss, you will see a difference. Yeah, he's the kind of guy that if he doesn't come in a hundred percent. It's he's kind of like way off, but I don't know. Maybe it's me. I, you know, uh, he's, you know, he, he's at that level like a Dorian or Phil or, or pretty much all you guys, but I didn't see any like, like when I used to watch uh, Sean Clarita train and he's, we used to go to the same gym too. When I used to watch Sean, it was like watching a machine, it was unbelievable. You know, it was like I I would look at him and I'd be like, there's no way I would be able to keep up with this kid. It's impossible. But then I, you know, when I see Justin, Justin was literally just kind of going through the motions. Is it just the fact that he has that much muscle and he has to just concentrate on his diet or does he just not have the eye of the tiger anymore? I don't know. You, you know, to, to answer, I, I, I'm, I don't go through the motions, but I am definitely nowhere close to training as heavy as I trained last year or years prior. You know, I had this discussion with Blue. When you when your body gets to a certain point, you know, what I mean, of size, because 
I don't need no more size. There's no way I want to put on any more size. Not at my age. Right. Um, now you're just doing, just maintaining, keeping blood in the muscle, and just now working on on your shape and uh, coming in peeled. Okay. Justin, I don't believe need any more size. When he started playing that game and shooting things in his shoulder and all that crazy nonsense, size is not Justin's problem. I mean, because the last show he did, he still plays pretty decent, and he was not too bad, but he wasn't Justin. Right. Um. So size is in the game. So right now at this position, I don't think Justin. He's not a young guy either. He's not a young guy. No. So, so my thing is, it's like, you know, to some people, it's like going through the motion. Uh, but for us, technically, it isn't if it makes sense. You got to look at Lee Haney when he trained back in the day. A lot of people trained with Lee Haney. So this guy used such light weight, but he made that weight very heavy with how okay. he moved it. Right? Right, right, right. So my training philosophy is different. I'm not throwing three and four plates on those squat rack, and I'm not doing all that. I don't have to do all that anymore. Right. But if I can come in a slower motion and keep that tension, muscle, you know, time under tension, and keep that that pressure on, and make you know six or seven plates on the leg, leg press machine difficult, you're going to get muscle growth from that. So I think once you get to a certain place in your bodybuilding career where putting on sides is not absolutely necessary anymore, now all you're doing is maintaining. That's it. You're just trying to maintain and focus on coming in a condition. Yeah. Luke, Luke, you're not in your head, but you train like a psychopath. <laughs> <laughs> I've I've seen you train. I've seen you train in person. I've seen you on Instagram. And you train like a lunatic, but you're not in your head. I, you're like the guy. I've the guy. He's like incredible, incredibly strong, insanely strong, and he he trains till he passes out. So, okay, what what were you gonna say? No, the, no, Phil is right with that with that um. With that, I my trainer put me under two plates, and it felt like five hundred pounds. And the when he made me, I had to go slow. That 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 time of the test, that that time time of the tension is is serious, and my legs were swollen more than when I would do four plates or five mm -hmm. plates. It felt it felt worse. <laughs> I crept the whole day from that. When so, when was this? Um, this was this was a, a couple weeks, few weeks ago. Really. He, yeah, we because he he's been doing that he he he's been doing that off and on every other session now. Ah, okay, doing that with me. So, because I saw you doing the uh, what was it uh, the vertical leg press? Yeah, and diamond and how how much did you have on? Um, I I you know what, I don't I don't never count the weight. I don't want to count the weight. I, yeah, you could have put I, a to get him Toyota on top of it. I get in my own head when he when he starts doing that, and I I don't want to know what the weight is. Everyone is everyone else is like, oh, well, how much are you putting on there? I I, I tell them I don't want to know. I just I just want to know when it's my set. It's time for me to go, and I go. I don't want to know the weight. It's just... Yeah, because it's fucking heavy. <laughs> <laughs> no, and I'm not kidding. I'm not exaggerating. I'm joking, but I'm not exaggerating. He's like no, a freight train in the gym. You. I believe. You know? I, mean, I see. I see both throwing up some weight too. Yeah, um, some, too. some of some of his training um uh, videos, but you know, I'm about, I'm turning fifty in June. You know what I mean? And I got to protect my joints. And I noticed last year with training really heavy, and then I told Blue, even training about twenty percent lighter, I'm bigger. It's crazy. My body don't necessarily work well with throwing up a heavier weight. When I was younger, mm -hmm. yes. Right. As you get older, you got to remember now. Your body don't recover. I don't care how much growth you're taking and all this other bullshit. Excuse my French. Your body is not going to recover like it's supposed to. So if you're hammering heavy weight, especially how they say, well, as you get older, you got to be careful with the legs. You could punish weight. Your recovery is not going to be there. And your legs will never repair. And you think your legs are going to grow from pushing heavy weight. And technically, it does not. So I think the big thing is just getting to know your body. Put your ego to the side and know we're bodybuilders. We're not powerlifters. So we need to focus on what works as a bodybuilder. And and I just got smarter as I went on within the past two years. I was still crazy, you know, at, at 45 and 47 trying to move weight. But as I get older, I'm just getting more knowledgeable that there's ways to train safely, still put on muscle. Remember, the muscle is being put on from food and nutrition. Training breaks the muscle tissue down. So we're not really technically growing from pounding weights at all. You know what I mean? It's nutrition, eating, and rest. But Dorian, you don't grow until you yeah. later on at night. When you sleeping and resting up, that's when your body is repairing itself and you grow. Right. The gym ain't growing. You know what I'm saying? It just puts stress on your joints and your muscles. 
Dorian, now that you're uh, in prep and you're eight weeks out, what kind of training are you doing? You still pushing heavy weight or no? It's more methodical, like Luke was saying and Phil was saying. Heavy is all relative. Uh, I don't think it's quite as heavy as I was training maybe a month ago. Mm -hmm. But then it's how you move it. I mean, if you slow down and keep time under tension, just like Bo said, or uh, Lucamon said, he can make that 225 on his back feel like 500 pounds. It's just a matter of moving it slow and keeping that time under tension. Mm. So I, I got up to benching 225 pounds on incline bench yesterday. I normally go heavier, but I did it so slow for 10 reps. You know, I got everything I needed it out of it. I need, I got the neuromuscular stimulation. Everything was coordinated in the way I was moving it. And I got the time under tension. That's all I need. There's no point in going heavy. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I mean, I know Bo's older. I know uh, Phil's older. When we were young, we could probably bounce weights around and kind of use our tissue elasticity th to throw weight from point A to point B. But just like Phil said, that's not what's effective in bodybuilding. We need time under tension. And as we get older, we got so much more control and mind-muscle connection um, that, that there's more risk in moving that heavy weight. You know, we're not going to bounce out of those reps like we did when we were young. We control it better and we move slower. We don't need to we don't need to use as much weight. And a good example, you know, I talked to Phil Heath in here probably four or five years ago. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, Phil, bro, I've never seen you squat five plates. I'm like, am I missing it? Is there a time when you're squatting that heavy? He's like, fuck no, man. He's like, I did that when I was young to put on my size. But anymore, he's like, I'll never go over 315 on squats. And that's coming from the best on earth you know yeah right 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 yeah yeah well phil heath. i mean yeah phil heath not you although you will be the best in the new york pro though this year hello yeah okay well, good. Time <laughs> my time's ahead of me yeah that's right that's right speaking that's a, of which that was a, that was a long pause uh, Dory. you paused too long <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah that's okay i can edit it out and make it seem like it was like that it's okay uh, speaking of uh, Dorian, have you seen uh, Tonio Burton? Yeah, it looks great. Yeah, he put it, he looks impressive. Not that you, I'm not saying you can't beat him, I'm saying you could beat him, but he does look impressive. Yeah, but I just he looks uh, impressive. The only way I'm going to be able to beat Tonio is either to match or beat his conditioning. Uh, and I'm bigger than he is, so I'm going to play that card, you know, I'm going to try to show my size up over him. Yeah, he's a great competitor. It's gonna be a throwdown, but just like you said, I th I think I can beat him too. I just got to show up. Yeah. Now, who else is in, in the New York Pro? You got you, Tonio, obviously Nick Walker. Who else is Who else is doing? Does anybody he's else know? Stewart. Oh, he's doing it. Yeah, that's it's gonna be stacked. It's gonna be a stacked show. Yeah, they say Nick Zilla might do it. Really? Yeah. Well, I I don't think he can get in the states. If he could yeah. get in here for Arnold, he's not gonna get in here for New York Pro. Yeah, yeah right. That's right. what I was thinking too. Yeah, but you know, even if you know, no disrespect to Maxilla. I mean, even if he if he steps on stage, listen. I mean, I'm I, you know I'm going to be honest. I competed against Tony, uh, Tony O uh, twice, three times. I mean, obviously he beat me at the Olympia, but um, I wasn't at my best either at the Olympia with such a strong stretch of uh, the season uh, during the Romania. But Tony O, I just got to give the guy the utmost respect because of Tony O's structure. So you got to understand, Tony O is like a baby Dexter Jackson. Yes, right. agreed. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So he don't necessarily have to outsize anybody mm -hmm. because when he beat my my um my teammate Beef Stew, it Beef Stew was bigger than Antonio, but right. Antonio's structure and shape was just far superior. You get it's just saying? God. It's God given. Like it's there's nothing right. you could do about it. Yeah, it's just so that's the big thing. It's like you know, if you can't outstructure him, then you're going to have to do your best to outcondition him. Yeah. You know what I mean? But at the end of the day, I mean, the guy structurally is a uh, God, God, God given talent. And I give respect where respect is due. Oh, absolutely. You have to. It's, it's going to be a stacked, uh, a stacked uh, show. And I'm actually uh, looking forward to, to uh, going. Cause I'm definitely going. Cause Dorian it's, it's 20 minutes from my house and Dorian's going to be there. So I'm going to support Dorian. That's all, you know, that goes without saying, but um, it's when you got beef stew, Tonio, Dorian, Nick Walker, and this, 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 I'd love to know who else is going to be in there. It's going to be some surprises. We just got to look how these shows are going. Remember, everybody's trying to gun for to get their uh, qualifications for the Olympia. Yeah. So it's going to come down to like after uh, okay, nobody's going all the way to uh, Brazil. Brazil, yeah. So honestly, tell you the truth, uh, 
Hot Hot Fiel is probably going to win that. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, in my opinion. And then you have you know you got the Detroit and all that. So it's going to come down to who did not do well or did not uh, get the pro qualifier. I think the New York Pro is going to turn out to be a very stacked show. It's just yeah, too soon yeah. to find out everybody who's doing it. I agree. I think Detroit. Right, but I'm gonna tell y'all, y'all know New York is the so what. Uh, if you a mass monster, good condition. New York is mass monster. So yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, they love they they love the beasts in New York. They love, they, yeah, they love yeah. that. Yeah, there's no question. I mean, who uh you know, Rami won the New York Pro, Nick yeah, uh beat, Nick beat. Walker. That's right, he beat Sergio. That's right. Sergio, yeah, that's right. Yeah, they love they love the that's a, no question about it. Me too. I'm a fan of the freaks. I'm not a fan of like, you know, I don't like I mean, listen, I, you know, Tony O looks great. Raphael looks great. But I'm a much more of a fan of a guy like Dorian or Phil. Or, you know, just the fucking monsters on stage. It's like, are you well, Dorian? You. I mean, I don't think I'm the monster, but thank you. You don't think you're a monster? <laughs> I don't think. Nah, I, because I are, I, you know what I mean? I mean, I respect what you're saying and, and, and some people that are the, with the freaks. But I'm just all about. I'm big on I'm like a Milos and and it's it's about even though Samson is a monster, but I'm just still big on yes, I'm a big dude. And if I wanted to push it through my career to get bigger, I could have, but that's not my case. I, I just one thing that Steve Weinberger told me back in 2020 when I when I placed fourth, he said to Tim Gardner, Who the hell is that guy? Because <laughs> back then nobody knew me. And Tim was like, Oh, that's a field that you're making tank. And he said, I like his freaking structure. Just his uh, structure with how his size and how everything flows. And uh, um, you had that killer condition too, though. Yeah. Right. So you know what I mean? Yeah, it's I just the best of both worlds. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's, it's no question about it. When Phil comes in, he comes in like, you know, basically to kill. But uh yeah, no, I t- I totally understand what you're getting. Obviously, if you have the structure and the size, you know, that wins. But you know, I'm not saying that, you know, I'm going to I understand that the biggest guy is not going to always win. I was just always a fan of the freaks. Oh, yeah. I was too oh, before. Always. I was always too. Ronnie you know, Coleman. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, what's his name? Who is the guy from Germany? Marcus Rule. Marcus, Marcus Rule. My yeah, God. He was, was like, boy. he that was, was a monster. I, it was in, it was in. I remember I, w- I was at the 2000, oh, 2000 Olympia. And right after the, the show, we went to the casino and he was playing blackjack. And uh, it was like this, this, you know, it took up two seats. It was ridiculous. Yeah. It was, it was insane, you know, and even Akeem, like people, don't, if you see Akeem in person, he, I say this all the time. The guy looks like a building. He's this yeah. monster I, I of a human I being. I compete against him in Tampa. He's a, that's a, that's a lot of beef. Yeah. He's a big <laughs> dude, a beef, uh, but he's yeah. just, he's a big human being to begin with. You know what I mean? He's just big guy, you know? Um, then there are guys that you're just like, really, you're pro, you know, you don't look, then they take their shirt off like a Sean Clarita and you're like, holy shit, what the fuck? <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know. All right, gentlemen. I appreciate each and every one of you. Bo, I'm glad that you uh decided to grace us with your presence this week. Of course, you yeah, always bro, have it. An- we appreciate you, man. Thanks for coming on, Bo. That's right. Yeah, anytime, and- anytime. Y'all just and- let me know. You have an open invitation always. Uh, Luke, I'm definitely, I know I keep saying this, but I definitely got to come to diamond and train with you one day. I'm definitely going to do it. I'll, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll get my ass to text you and get my ass there. And Dorian, uh, I'll be at the New York pro, but then again, I'll see you next week on, on here, but I'm going to be there. You got people in backstage with you. I don't know. Got well, a new if, thing going. if you need me, I'll be there. I uh, appreciate it, brother. Thanks for having me. You got it. All right, fellas. I'll talk All to right, you soon. Man. All right, later.